Um, our group was tomatoes and cucumbers, and it was Zoe, Micah, and Garrett. For our project, we grew two different kinds of botany crops, tomatoes and cucumbers, and we grew these in a Dutch bucket hydroponic system. But what exactly is a Dutch bucket hydroponic system? It is a system where in which substrate is contained in a bucket, and the crops are grown within the substrate in the bucket. And for these crops to grow, water and a nutrient solution are supplied to the crops through a drip hose to the base of the plant. The nutrient solution will then drain through the substrate, and whatever solution is not absorbed by the substrate is drained through a hole in the bottom, or in the instance of a closed system, it is recirculated through the system and then applied back to the plants. The system that we used, however, was an open system where, as previously mentioned, any excess solution drained through the substrate and out of a hole in the bottom and was never reused. As for our own materials and setup, we used 48 dash buckets. Within each of these dash buckets were divided into 24 plants. And in of these 24 plants, we used 12 tomatoes and 12 cucumbers into these two groups. And the substrate we used was coconut coir. One group was given a nutrient solution with a concentration of 75 parts um, fertilizer. The other received 150 parts of fertilizer. The plants were given supplemental lighting during the first few weeks during the winter when natural sunlight was mostly insufficient. As for the measurements that we performed, um, we measured plant size, both vertical height and east-west and north-south widths. Um, the vertical height was measured until the plants grew taller than the trellis they were growing on and began growing to the side, and the east-west and north-south widths were measured and averaged for a horizontal footprint until fruit set became the dominant measurement. We also measured the leaf pigments, chlorophyll, and anthocyanin um, with the OptiScience CCM and ACM 200 plus models respected, respectively. And we measured on the fully, newest fully expanded leaf with the terminal leaflet for the tomatoes. We also measured media chemistry, EC and PH, both on the HANA HI98131 waterproof PH EC TBS combo tester, and we used the 2 to 1 dilution method. We measured fruit harvest, both the number of fruit and the total mass of that week's harvest. Um, for the tomatoes, we used fruit clusters rather than individual fruit. And we also measured fruit, crop, fruit quality with percent bricks, which is total soluble solids content and index for sugar and sweetness. And then we also measured the percentage of tomatoes unmarketable due to blossom and rot. For our results, this was just some fun pictures that we took, kind of showing the, the crazy amount of cucumbers that we harvested, and also a fun little picture of our tomatoes. As for our results with plant size, there were not really any noticeable differences for or between the treatments for either the cucumbers or the tomatoes. Um, the width was very variable, um, not a particularly consistent measurement just because you have uh, the leaves move around during the day and you have to keep the track of the exact plants that you measure. Um, the plant height measurements were a lot more consistent, but we ceased those after the plants reached the trellis height because they started growing sideways overlapping each other and so it just was not feasible and we just decided to switch to our focus toward um, fruit. As for the leaf pigment content, the differences between the treatments were pretty minimal, um, there, especially for the tomatoes. Um, there wasn't anything super significant or jarring. The tomato leaf pigments were relatively constant. Um, they did fluctuate quite a lot as you can see, but there were no, no real trends over time. The cucumber pigments, however, did tend to increase over time. Um, the cucumber pigments were also slightly higher in the 75 ppm nitrogen treatment than the 150 ppm, but this difference wasn't really significant, and the 75 ppm treatments were also on the sunnier side of the greenhouse, which may have influenced the pigment content. For the harvest, the 75 parts per million treatment for, the to uh, for tomatoes um, had slightly higher number and mass yields, but as I said, the 75 ppm groups were on the sunnier side, so take that as you will. The cucumber yields abruptly increased in late March, and the numerical and mass yields were higher in the 150 ppm nitrogen group than the 75 ppm group. 
As for the media chemistry, the EC was highly variable. As you can see, there's very large error bars, um, but the pH was more constant. For both crops, the EC decreased during the middle of the observation period, likely as the plants were growing and setting their fruit. Um, but there were no real differences in pH between treatments or over time. Uh, the tomato EC was slightly higher toward the end of the study than the 150 ppm treatment and in the 150 ppm treatment, um, obviously because we were adding more fertilizer. Something we measured to measure the quality of our fruit was the bricks or the total soluble solid. And as you can see, the tomato bricks stayed pretty constant throughout the um, period that we measured it. And there was very little variation between the two treatments. But um, that's in contrast to the cucumber bricks that was kind of all over the place. Um, they were kind of up and down, but they started to get a little more consistent towards the end of our trial. So some problems that we encountered in this project, um, one was thrips. They showed up pretty heavy after a few weeks when our plants got bigger. They didn't cause too much problems, but they did cause some fruit curling. And the other big problem was blossom end rot, which is usually caused by lack of calcium in the fruit. Um, and that showed up pretty early on the some of the first fruits that we harvested, but it tapered off as the plants got bigger and they were more able to take up the nutrients. Finally, just some takeaways and kind of what we learned during this project. Um, we all learned a lot about the scientific measurements that are involved in hydroponics, the pH, the EC, um, the pigment constant, the pigment pigment content in the leaves, um, the bricks, all the stuff that goes into the science of hydroponics, and also how closely monitored systems need to be. Us personally, we did have an issue where both of our treatments were receiving the same amount of um, fertilizer for a period of time, and so that just kind of goes to show how careful you have to be with your system and if it is doing what it's supposed to do. And also how fast cucumbers get big. They grow really fast. <laughs> and sometimes they grow through the grates. And we just thought that was very funny. And thank you so much for watching this presentation and we hope you enjoyed it.